wanted to talk today about ring circuits and how to test them. And we're going to do it in three parts just to keep each part nice and short, or as short as possible. But I just wanted to start off by talking about a standard radial circuit. So I've just drawn a simple radial circuit here, which we could, if we wish, protect with a 20 amp Type B circuit breaker. Now 2.5, 1.5 flat twin and earth can actually take up to 27 amps. And so obviously a B20 in this particular instance is perfectly adequate for protecting that cable. But when it comes to ring circuits, the difference is the piece of cable that runs from here and goes back to the consumer unit into the top of the miniature circuit breaker. So we've now changed that radial into a ring. And we can actually now protect that circuit with a 32 amp circuit breaker, so it'll be a B32. But as I said before, the cable can actually take 27 amps. So why is this? Well, this is because we're actually going to be sharing the current between two legs. And it, because of this, it's very, very important that we actually test the ring correctly. Now, I'll just demonstrate something. If we were to actually, say, break the ring there, for instance, we may not actually be aware of that failure, but now what we've done is we've actually got two radials now, which are now protected by our 32 amp brake, which is too much for the actual cable concerned. So this is where a correct regime of testing actually comes in with the ring. Basically, there are three tests. Test number one is actually what we call end-to-end -end resistance. And the whole point of that test is we actually want to prove it is actually a ring. Once we've got the results from this, and once it passes that test, it allows us to do some calculations. We're going to be making some cross-connections later to actually check that the ring is working satisfactorily. The second test we're going to do is what we call little r1 plus little rn, and we're going to divide that by 4, and then we're going to make a cross connection and test it. And the third test is little r1 plus little r2. We're going to divide that by 4, and then we're going to make a cross connection and test that. So what is this little r1 and little rn? Well, that is actually the results from the first test. Because what we end up with here is little r1, that's end-to-end -end with our line conductor, little rn, which is end-to-end -end with our neutral conductor, and little r2, which is end-to-end -end of our actual CPC. So what I'm actually going to do to help you out here is I'm going to use some fictitious figures so we can see how these calculations work. And why over four, you may ask? Well, that's really just because we're dealing with parallel resistances, and it gives us a quick and convenient method of actually calculating what our target figures actually are when we do the cross-connection, which I'll explain shortly. So what I'm actually going to do is, let's say that we measure R1 as 0.4 ohms, for instance. Now, Rn is really the same cable going by the same route, so it should really be very much the same. Let's say that's 0.04. If we now divide that by 4, that gives us 0.2 ohms. So when we do our cross-connection, we should be able to measure 0.2 ohms at each socket. What we've got to remember, though, is that with the R2, that's actually a smaller cross-sectional area conductor. And if we divide 2.5 by 1.5, then we come up with 1.67. And if we multiply one of these by 1.67, we'll come out with about 0.6 or 0.7. So the results of this little equation here will be 0.4. And just to keep the mathematics easy, I'm going to call it 0.8. 
I'm going to divide that by 4, and that's 0.12 over 4, which is 0.3 ohm. So when we make the cross connection for our R1 and R2, we should get 0.3 ohms. So those are the tests, but I wanted to just to examine what we're actually doing with the cross connection. What we want to do is what we call a figure of eight cross connection, because it's the only way of measuring the ring. So let's have a look at what we're trying to achieve here. Notice that we've already done the end-to-end -end tests, so we've proved it is in fact a ring. And we're going to make a figure of eight cross-connection so that we create an equal resistance all the way around. So we are going to do that. You can use crocodile clips or a connector, whatever is convenient. And if we pick a point on the ring, let's, let's just pick that point there. If we follow all the way around, you can see we have in fact created one gigantic loop of cable. But let's have a look what we've actually achieved there. It's very, very important that we understand this. If you could imagine stretching out that figure of eight and laying it around the workshop, what we've actually done is put a pin from one socket there and a pin from one socket there. In other words, the resistance there is the same as the resistance there. So if that was the line pin and that was the neutral pin, then on that particular socket you should get your target figure. Further to that, when you switch to another socket, you should also get that target figure because the resistance from there to there is the same as the resistance from there to there. So what I wanted to have a look, look at now was what happens if we actually do that incorrectly? Could say, well, that's a loop, isn't it? And if we stretch that all out, it would form a circle. But what we've actually done there is we put the two pins there and there, and there and there, and there and there. So that when we measure at each socket, we're actually measuring this loop, followed by this loop, followed by this loop, and so on. So actually what we'll find is that as we work our way around the ring, the figures will increase. And as we work our way back around the ring this way, the figures should then decrease. So as you can see, it's very important to make sure we get these cross connections done correctly. Once we've done the cross connections, it's simply the case of going to each socket on the ring and measuring our target figure. What we teach here at PTT to help our students out is we get them to write this down every single time. It's called a pro forma. So we write down little r1, little rn, and little r2. When we put an equal sign, she just gives them somewhere to record the figures. We write that down our two little equations. Little r1 plus little rn over 4, and little r1 plus little r2 over 4. And that actually equals our target figure. And I'm putting these boxes here just so that there's somewhere for people to 
record their results. It's important to remember that this is test number one, the end to end. This is test number two, R1 and Rn. And this is test number three, R1 and R2. Each one of these two is actually a half check of the polarity. So we must go through all these tests to make sure that the ring is wired up correctly. So what we have here is the actual measurement. So we put our target figures in here, which were 0.2 and 0.3. We do our cross connections, and then we record our results. It's the result of this one here that actually becomes the R1 and R2 for the ring circuit.